taking the questions out here. Yeah. Are, are those questions? No, no. So have written it? Yes. So help me collect it. Uh, those who want to speak and speak. Q&A, should in case there are personal things that are coming up. So those who did not come, sorry. Somebody sent. Wait, 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 wait. From one line. Ha. Okay, so if there's any sensitive question, I'll parry it and I'll look for the person. If you are writing to me to, for the question, write it, put your name so that there's a follow-up, I will uh, answer it. The first question here says, good afternoon, sir. We have highlighted the need for younger women to be discipled by the older women. Is there a way to aid this, especially from the older women's angle? The manner of approaching them does not come easy from some of us, for some of us. Is it possible for them to extend the hand of friendship, a membership, a mentorship too, e.g., inviting sisters over by themselves or asking us important questions when possible? Yes, and this is this will be taken up by um, the 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 women leaders. We are going to talk about this. Like I said, this for me is a pool to get more things to how to improve our women's ministry. We are going to form. We are going to have to talk to ourselves uh, so that we will find a way to ensure that um, there will be some there will be some deliberateness in. Um, mentoring us ourselves. In fact, we might even assign, if possible. Uh, we might counsel and say, come, I think you need to speak to this person. I do that when I'm counseling young sisters for marriage. I'll say, well, you're going to marry, these are aspects of marriage that you might need. I, as a pastor, I know be comfortable to tell you, but speak to that sister, she'll prepare you for, for marriage, maybe on their body and all that. So yes, we will work on this um, very soon. So you get, you get back from us quickly. Next question here is um, what advice will you have for someone who has chosen a career against motherhood? Will you advise the person to To now or to pursue motherhood, seeing that a lot of parental support has been in, have been placed in that person, would it be a Christ, would it be Christian for such a person to break the heart of the, their parent? Oh, will he, would that, will you advise the person to quit to pursue motherhood, seeing that a lot of parental support has been placed in that person? Okay, I think what the person is saying is that your parents have invested in you and then you want to pursue motherhood ahead of career. Would it be Christian for such a person to break the heart of their parents, not only physically but spiritually? Is it really possible to be a doctor as early years of working and also be a godly mother later? Ha! Ah, I know you guys in medical, stu medical students, maybe it's from you. Yes, yeah, so remember... That's why we need mentorship. We are, we are not all, we are not going to go on the same journey. First is, no, I'm not going to tell anybody to quit his job, our job or not. Don't worry, I'll leave you. But I'll tell you the high calling before you. You must go on a journey. If I force you to pick a job, when you hit the wall, you say, I did it. If I force you to quit your job, when the Brooklyn comes, you are broke, you say it's me. You, that's what, what we have done today, is to say, look at the high calling. You now ask yourself, Lord, there's nothing wrong with having a desire. That's why Titus 2 say, 
it will, it will be helped to manage your desires. So look at that thing. Or you can say, okay, I can walk up to this point and stop. It's not one cap fit all. But it is what you need to prayerfully consider and to seek counseling from your elders and for other women. Now, don't worry about your parents. God created them. Once God gives you your convictions, you add your parents to your prayers. Let me tell you, if you are a godly woman and you take some decisions, they may not agree, but they will start to say, I, 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 I don't agree, but I've always known you to be a godly girl. I hope you are right. So, don't worry. Your convictions, make sure it's biblical. Well, even if you want to juggle it. So, there are some times I even enter, uh, might enter a path that will take you to walk a bit for a while. And that walk takes you away. But you are crying, Lord. You know that this work will not make me fulfill what I want to do. And God can allow you to be there for a while to teach you some patience. And slowly, at the right time, he will take you or give you something that will make it easy. Maybe that he will bump you up in your career so you can have more time or will make you have a career change or you totally quit and say, no more. I, my example, my wife was sewing, we could not eat. Sadoka has talked about... Uh, selling beans, uh, eating beans. During COVID, we started making masks and I was the one selling the mask. But there was no money. I was a pastor of SGBC then, but nothing. We were not paid. So my wife was, we made nothing cover. But nobody was buying. All the breastfeeding mother was using wrapper. So we turned the nursing cover fabric into nose mask. And I will put nose masks inside COVID because I was going out to preach, so I was no more afraid of COVID. So I was driving everywhere. We made almost 100K the first one week of COVID. She was sewing all day. I was the one going out to sell. COVID 2020, to eat, because there was lockdown. And then when God started blessing and church started paying me, she was bold enough. She, started, she left the work at first. Later on, she finally left, and now she's at home fully. So there's... there's God will give wisdom, but once you set your heart to do these things, God will help you to do it. That's what I, I will say. Um, in, discipline, in discipline of children, how can one know how much punishment or chastisement is enough for a misbehavior? Shamakba. Don't kill them. Also, when the Bible talked about not sparing the rod in Proverbs 13, 24, it didn't mean beating the children. First of all, it is literally don't spare the rod. One. Secondly, it's broader than that. It also includes discipline. But don't spare the rod is don't spare the rod. It's the ancient and still valid way from small. But of course, we know how to apply it appropriately. So it has changed in our world. Well, but don't spare the rod. In fact, punishment, is, the rod is used as punishment also uh, when the government, uh, I think in 1 Peter 3, when the government disciplines us for breaking the law. When you break the law, what kind of rod does the government place on you? Penalty. Financial penalty. Jail. So, whatever it is, it's painful. It, it, it touches your skin. If you are thrown to prison and you are flogged, which one do you want? So, don't spare the rod. Is don't spare the rod. But of course, we are not saying that uh, you, should be, you should destroy your children. No. That's why if you don't have if you have not, if you don't have a handle on your anger management. I know mothers that can throw a, a mortar and pistol on their children or the children. No. And this is why where you have to be sure that as you are growing, you can correct properly. Correct biblically. God does not God is patient towards us. He doesn't discipline us and give us what we deserve as a 
uh, his children also. We oh, yeah, this uh, food. Is that a giveaway? Ah, Emma Jung, I don't know. Okay. Any other question? Yes. Okay, so this question is from somebody online. So I'm just going to read it out. How do you prepare yourself as a sister to someone who has special needs children? How do you also approach someone to tell them that their child may have some special needs issue, especially if you have taken time to observe and are able, and you are pretty sure what and how do you say it if the person is not very, very close like a blossom friend? Um, so there are two questions. Yes, let me start from the second one. When it comes to that kind of thing, you have to be very sensitive. You have to be most sensitive and yet bold. You're, when you know that, it, you, you might notice that the, womb, the sister is just living in self-denial. And when that is the case, you have to find a way to prepare the person's mind. You might even a bit say, perhaps, it might be, we are not sure. Go for an evaluation. There's a way people are, people can be, uh, you can give somebody a news in a very uh, gentle way. If you think that you can't, you can speak to the elders. You can speak, to, an elder should have access to every person in the church. You can speak to other older women in the church. There are more be there are other older women in church, uh, a bit much, much more uh, matured women that can help the sister because you, you probably might be uh, noticing that because the person is not agreeing that the baby is special need, the, the the person is not able to start to do the right things for 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 the baby. Now. I also have to bring this up. If you have a special new child and start teaching brother up, and the people around you are not attending to the child the way you think they should, it could be two things. Yes, they might just be insensitive, and that they will repent of. But I think largely it might also be lack of education. And so, now that we are even comfortable enough to talk about it, we need to talk about it even more in our midst. So that when somebody comes to the church newly with a special need child, the person knows that these people understand what it is. Many of us, because we came from some Pentecostal background, we think it's a taboo. Special needs are, you did something wrong. No. And most of these children have a special need, even with the taxi now. Those children, I don't see them as special in anymore. They're in the class. They've grown. They're talking to you. Yes. And me, I'm a special need person. So I'm here. Yes. I have attention deficiency. You don't know. A attention. I'm distracted. My mind is, so like, my mind is working 24-7. So when I see Tony in me, so I see, I see Tony, yeah. I see me in Tony, rather. Yeah. So, that's okay. But I was not treated as a special need. I was beating black and blue <laughs> to sit down and read. And that's why, as I am here, if you like, be playing a band here, I can read. I, will, I, can, I can switch off from all of you and I'll be fixing, looking at this thing. That's me. So that's why I, I can play. So I turn my special need to proper need. <laughs> so we should talk about it. Um, how do you take your special need? Now, special needs, get an ev evaluation, seek the help you need to seek for the physical side. But there's a need to attend to the child's spiritual need. A child may be autistic, and the autism has affected the child's brain or whatever, but the child's heart is still affected by the fall. So, Learn to separate the heart from the brain. Don't ever say your child is a liar because it's autistic. It's unruly because it's autistic. Yes, part of the misbehavior of your child might come because of HDHD. But 
is this is latched upon a, 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 a heart that is deceitful, that is dead. So while you are dealing with the HDHD, pray that God will convert the heart. Imagine the heart is converted. When HDHD brings his, he brings his disorderliness, he will meet a quiet heart. Some children, they are able to control themselves more when they get converted. As they grow and get converted, they will be able to know that I talk too much, I might go off. They will come back. And they will learn to pray knowing they are disadvantaged because of their, uh, 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 their abilities or inabilities. So, learn to separate the brain from the heart. And while you are dealing with the, bra the, the brain, medically or with therapy, don't forget that the heart must be ministered to by the gospel. That's my counsel on how to help a special need child. Any other question? Yeah. Okay, yes. Um, okay. How do you prepare yourself as a sister to help someone who has special needs children? Okay, yeah. Yes, that's answer. Thank you. Um, so, uh, why we call it special? It's because they require extra attention. Okay? Um, just like Pastor said, yes, education. But um, I would call it intentionality. Okay? You're just being intentional. You, you are a sister, you're a mother you see two to three children, you should be able to tell which one maybe is not meeting up with his or her peer if you pay close attention. And when you realize that, you just know that, okay, this particular person needs additional attention. Um, and I'm also praying that maybe we'll get to a point where we start you know, sharing knowledge about how to educate one another but you know it's something you see you just see that a child okay he's not um behaving so you try to pay extra attention and one thing i've also noticed if you if you pay attention to a child especially as a mother you would know what to do to help the child and the good thing about it is other sisters are also watching you i'll give you a simple example so most special needs children one major thing that um, is common with a special needs child is self-awareness. They are not as self-aware as other children. So you can easily see a special needs child maybe walking and the child is walking through you, mm. right? It just like hits you and just walks, you know. And um, maybe other children will know to stop, move, and then, you know, so... You as a mother, you as a sister, when you see that, I don't want to see your face squeeze when that happens. This is a child. If he was or her was okay, of course, he's not here or she's not going to walk through you, right? So it's something that you'd, just to even help, stop the child and say, um, in fact, there was an example, there was something I did and... Um, one of the special needs child in church and then um, I, I, I stopped him and I said you just walked through me then I, said, then I said let me show you something so I stood and then I hit him and he's like yeah I said yes that's what you just did you see you didn't like it you know and I just you know spent some time to talk to him and say when he said, but, but they're on the way I said yes they're on the way just stop and say excuse me please just stop you know those are the things and when you see other people when you, when you do that and other people watch you, they also learn that all you just need to do is, you can't stop the child. He's a child. You can't stop the child and teach. That moment, teach. You know. I think the other question is about how do I then tell, you know, be bold enough. Um, I think for me, a sister or a mother knows when you are compassionate about the child, not necessarily um, wanting to say it out of irritation. 
maybe or out of discomfort, you know. A mother can tell when, you know, you are endeared to that child or just genuinely concerned for that child. And again, you have to build relationship with this person that you want to come and tell that, you know, I think your child is not doing well or I think your child is not meeting up. You have to start with building relationship with this person. And then I remember telling someone, you know, when somebody was mentioning and I said, have you, have you spent time to pray? Like, be intentional about praying for this child, you know, without anybody um, seeing you do it. Just pray. That would, you know, draw you closer to that child's need. And you build confidence to be able to sit with maybe the mother and say, I've noticed this, I've noticed that, you know, about your child. What do you think? That's what I wanted to add. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. We have just 10 more minutes. Okay. If you um, are going to Abekuta, quickly eat your food. Okay, sir. So, um, my question is this. How do I stay um, hopeful and faithful in my preparation and desire for marriage and motherhood? Then the second one is, how do I um, get over my anxiety, or fear, for, fear of childbirth and homeschooling? <laughs> okay, so I think... So, um, all those anxieties, cares, that for, and fear for childbirth and motherhood are similar to every other anxiety and care that we have for other things in life. What you do is you anxious for nothing, with prayer and supplication, let your request be made known to God. Take it as a woman, you are praying for some things that are general and some that are specific to you as a woman. Lord, I'm genuinely afraid of this. I mean, I was told that my little boy, seven year old, we are trying to teach him how to swim. So the teacher threw him in a 12 feet pool. Just threw him there, said, You have to conquer the fear of water. And he went, Boo! The guy was under, took him out. So he shook off and was doing as if he was ready. But then my wife told me that as I was taking them there yesterday, before, before yesterday rather, they were praying and he, when it was his turn to pray, his prayer was, Lord, we are going to the swimming pool today. Help not to drown. <laughs> Jesse. So, now, I didn't know. So I took him to the swimming pool and his brother, of course, now has entered 12 feet and then the teacher held him he kept his straight face his brother was busy swimming and said daddy 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 he kept his straight face and swam first one two three four the one that was overconfident started drowning he kept a straight face so when we came out i said ah, jesse you did it too i said but i was afraid but when I go one out to my wife, my wife said, ah, he prayed about it yesterday. I said, wow. So he had fears. He prayed. He faced the fears. He went through it. You see him, you would think he, he had no fears. But he told me that he was afraid. But he still went back and forth. And even the one that was overconfident was the one that was now drowning that they had to bring up. So we bring our fears to the Lord. And even when we go through those things, he will never leave us and forsake us. Now, the first question. I think since God has linked our spiritual growth to our success in motherhood, from 2 Timothy 2, verse 14, he said he will deliver you in motherhood. I think if you are just, if you just focus on growing spiritually, growing in the Lord, learning from other women, you will be prepared and be faithful when it's your turn. You will just be sure that you just that you you face challenges. There's nobody that will skip the challenge. It came from the fall. Everybody will go through that challenge, but you will be able to overcome without having a major scar in your life. That's what I think you should do. Okay, so thank you. Um, you are all eating, and I should eat also. Um, but again, please. Let your husbands watch this. I'm sure they will be able to understand um, 
where, where we are going. We hope to do this again. There are still other areas about motherhood that we talk about. Uh, the dignity of motherhood. Mothers are shapers of destiny. Maybe we mention one. Mothers as partners with God. I listened to that uh, from Elizabeth Elliot. It was beautiful. How mothers partner with God in this, uh, when it comes to saving a child. So we will talk about all these things and then hopefully we'll find time to do it. Um, so I'll end here. I will allow you to eat. Let me just pray because time is, is far spent. You can just don't close your eyes because you put your rice in your nose. But just try and listen to me. Let's bow our heads and pray. Our Father, we thank you for your mercies and grace. We do thank you for how you have helped us from the logistics to all the planning, all the wonderful women who have come here to speak and those who have listened, our mothers, our sisters. We do pray, O Lord, that truly you will raise now miss a generation of older women that will train younger women a generation of women that will raise godly men and women that will, that will, that will serve you. Women that will, that will raise elders and deacons and missionaries in our midst. Help us, O oh Lord, to bring us out of the rat race and the goals and aspirations people set for their children and help us fix our mind on your own goal for a child to know you, to do your will, to glorify you and to enjoy forever. That should be our motto, O oh Lord. Help us that every child that comes out of the womb of these women and the one that they will train, whether they adopt or they, they teach outside as a teacher or mother, that they will ensure that they put in values that will make them know you, glorify you, and enjoy you forever. Please, Lord, we pray that you take us home safely. Thank you, our merciful Father. Help us that tomorrow in our different churches we will still hear more of your word that we all will grow spiritually to be able to fulfill our high calling as mothers and for us fathers as fathers. Thank you, our merciful Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, the flesh of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now forever. Amen. Amen.